I'm so happy you are here today for this show because this episode is going to blow you away. If you are a TCM practitioner or a student in the making as an acupuncturist coming up, you are going to love this. We are celebrating Chinese New Year, the year of the wood dragon, the young wood dragon at that. And today with my guest, Dr. Sonia Tan, we talked about everything that we could talk about when it comes about the dragon year. We talked about the month, the day, the hour, all the five elements, how Chinese astrology is so intricate and so deep. So we kind of went into it to understand it better. And I learned so much today. So I was so excited about this. I can't wait for you to listen. So without further ado, let's do this. Let's go. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to AcuPro, a show dedicated to making Chinese medicine and acupuncture easy to grasp and fun to learn. Hi, I'm your host, Clara Cohen. I support practitioners and students like you in changing the world one patient at a time. My goal is to share my passion for TCM and empower you to achieve superior patient care. I love to showcase the amazing benefits of acupuncture because after all, acupuncture rocks! Happy Chinese New Year and welcome to Dr. Sonia Tan, who is here to talk to us about Chinese astrology and the year of the wood dragon. I'm so excited about this because I don't know a lot about Chinese astrology, but you do. So before we start, I'm going to just introduce you to everyone because a lot of people may not know who you are and to get kind of a little bit of a knowledge of who you are. So first of all, you are practicing in Vancouver, Canada. We've mm -hmm. been friends <laughs> for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I know it's you started in 2006. It's always good to have a friend because you feel more comfortable because this is something that, you know, I'm just starting to do all those interviews and podcasts. So I'm, I'm really happy it's with friends because I feel more at ease yeah. <laughs> or more at home. Yeah. <laughs> so you have been practicing since 2006. You are a registered TCM practitioner. You also have a doctorate, which I remember when you did this. That was amazing in acupuncture and oriental medicine. But you're also a consultant for feng shui and Chinese astrology and face reading, which is amazing. That's just like, I would have so many questions for you, but we're going to stick to one subject <laughs> and we'll have you come back. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. You also teach. And this is something that we did together at the same place. And so you teach Chinese astrology as well. You have a program, but you also teach Dr. Tan's balance method or Richard Tan balance method, which is very popular. Actually, you uh, created a great course for Acupro Academy recently, which is the scalp acupuncture, which all the people that invested in this course absolutely loved it. The feedback was amazing. I knew that because I've seen you teeth. It was such a great, great way to introduce you to the Acupro Academy community. So I'm so glad you did this. You're also an author because, you know, you don't do enough. So <laughs> we're going to make you do more. <laughs> You have written the foundation of balance acupuncture, which is about the whole balance methods that you teach so well. And something that I have to say about this is that you also translated the book in French, which I'm so mm -hmm. impressed with because French is my second language and I have three books and they're not translated in any language. So <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, that, that was just amazing. So in a nutshell... This is who you are. There could be more, but uh, did I forget something? <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know, but that's, I mean, it's just very flattering that you, you did that and definitely very appreciative and grateful for you to have met you. And, you know, just, it's great to meet, meet like-minded people and having me as part of your community. And it's likewise, because, you know, when you meet friends or you meet people in the TCM community, everybody has strength and your strength is you're not afraid of a challenge. You're not afraid to push yourself, to work hard and to show up. And that's something that not everybody can do. And this is why I think you're so successful overall with everything you do. So I'm, I'm happy to have met you because sometimes I think of you and I'm like, oh, what would Sonia do? Oh, I better push harder because I know she would push harder. <laughs> oh, thanks so, for that compliment, though. Yeah. 
Well, it's true. I mean, it's true. You know, when we talk and we're friends, we never compliment each other because we're just having conversation on other things, right? But because we're here today, I'm like, wait a minute, I got to tell you this. So one of the things I wanted to start before we go into the Chinese astrology of the year of the wood dragon, I don't know that story at all. So I want to learn how you went from a career in banking, yes, as a banker, to TCM and astrology and all that you do nowadays, which is so far from the banking industry. So tell me that story. And so everybody would be fascinated to hear. All right. Well, the medium length story is that <laughs> I, I I grew up with allergies and asthma as a child and from the age of five or eight, and they were severe. I had, I could, if I touched something, my hands would swell. I would have swollen lips. I remember at one point I, I had the swollen face, swollen eyes. I couldn't see. It was really bad. So I went on weekly injections, daily medication, and an asthma in, inhaler, as I also had asthma. And during that time growing up, I was also an elite rhythmic gymnast. As I got older and later in my career, it became harder and harder for me to finish a three-minute routine, and my medication, my in inhalers, were not working. Around the age of 21, I was having upper back soreness and tightness. And I thought it was just from gymnastics. I went to see a massage therapist hoping to get, say, just regular Swedish. And there was no one available. And there was a shiatsu therapist available and said, would you like to try it? Didn't know much about it. They said, you just use pressure points on these acupuncture points and channels. I said, sure, I'm willing to try it. And then at the end of the session, she said to me, do you have lung problems? I mean, you could imagine my shock, right? I said, yes, I do. How did you know that? And she said, because every point on your lung channel, you complained about being very sore. It wasn't my back. It was my lung channel. I was like, wow. So she said, you should see my acupuncturist. So at that point, it just really opened that door because that door was sort of kind of half open. I grew up with my grandfather growing herbs in the backyard, explaining what to do. Uh, my other grandfather practiced astrology, face reading feng shui, and both of them had practiced feng shui. But, you know, as a kid, you don't always really pay attention. This is your family. But at that point, that opened the door going, whoa, okay, wait a minute. What, do, what have I had under my nose? So I went to that recommendation. And within six months, she got me off my inhaler. I was able to compete at a major competition in Helsinki. I came back and I said, what can you do for the rest of my allergies? Can you get me get me off of these medications? I committed to a year. And I mean, I committed. I, I made sure I went at least once or twice a month of acupuncture. I continually did the herbs. I was cooking them on the stoves like the, the original way. And uh, a year later, I got off all of my medication. And it was at that point I realized, this is what it feels like to be 100% natural. I didn't realize how my body was had this underlying vibration being on medication. And to be free of that medication was so astounding and it felt so good. So you would think that would have been enough for me to say, oh, I'm going to leave banking and I'm going to become a Chinese medicine practitioner. But no, well, I was so into elite sports. I thought, you know what? I don't want to be in the banking world. It's too profit driven. I want to I want to help people. And I, I was an elite athlete. So I thought, let me be a sport physiotherapist. I went and did a kinesiology degree. I was working as a physio clinic as a kinesiologist. Then my light bulb moment went off because the most passionate thing that I was talking about with my clients was was seeing them after they received acupuncture. And I said, how is that working for you? And I finally had the light bulb moment saying, look at how much excitement I get over acupuncture because I knew how much it helped me. So then I said, okay, I need to change. And so I went and I did Chinese medicine school and I, I haven't looked back. Obviously, I haven't looked back. And then embracing the classical Chinese medicine of the things that aren't taught in school, like the balance, uh, the classical balance acupuncture, the, the holography, all channel theory, all that stuff. And then adding in astrology and feng shui, which is a classical Chinese physician would have known them all. And you can advise all that way. And that was what I had been exposed with, with my grandfather. So I've really been enjoying the journey of trying to really bring that back of those things that were forsaken and that I grew up with and trying to keep passing that on. That's awesome. So one of the thing I wanted to ask when you were describing that you took all Chinese herbs in decoction, which... Oh. 
as you know, compliance <laughs> with patients with decoction is very difficult. So yeah. what's interesting is when someone is motivated enough, but they see a little bit of the results, then the motivation goes 100% more. They're much more compliant once they see the results, right? Yeah. So that's really good that you went and followed all the direction because you were motivated mm -hmm. because you felt good. And you know, it's funny when you said that one of my patients years ago, after I treated her for a few weeks, she walks in, she sits down and she goes, I have a question for you. And I said, Oh, sure. She goes, is it normal to feel normal? <laughs> <laughs> and right? I was like, right. Because she's oh. like, I haven't felt like this in so long that I didn't know that. Yes. Is this normal to feel like this? Because so many patients or so many people in general, every day are used to have headaches, to feel a certain yeah. way. It's their new normal. So for her, yeah. suddenly it was like, what? What? So for you, I think it was the same thing. It was just like, Definitely. oh my gosh, I don't need a puffer anymore. Are you kidding me since I was a kid? Because I had no memory of normal because at the age of five, when I had allergies and I was already taking medication... I don't have a memory of what my body was normal until I finally got off of it. I'm like, I am not vibrating anymore. I feel so good. I feel so connected to my body. You know, I had allergies and asthma for 15 years. So a year and a half of acupuncture and herbs was nothing. Yeah, exactly. Because you you have the motivation because you've seen what it feels like and not having to rely on medication to get scared every time you can't breathe because it is scary yeah. when you can't take a breath, right? Oh, yeah. Like it. Oh, yeah. I love the story. It's interesting that you went first to, you know, kinesiology before you jumped in. And is that because you felt that it would be more accepted within your family? Because I know some people, you know, like within your family, there's an expectation of you having a certain job and that maybe you know, TCM doctor was not the same as a Western kinesiology kind of degree. So can you share that with us? <laughs> I have a funny story. Well, the reason why I was a banker first, because my parents gave me the option to be a lawyer, a doctor, a Western doctor, or a businessman. So I said, I don't like to argue, so I'm not going to be a lawyer. I don't like the biomedical sciences, so I'm not going to do that. So how about I choose business? So that's why I went to business school first, and then I became a banker. But I was doing that as an obligation to my parents. It wasn't for me. So then when I left banking, it was for me, finally, right? And then at that point, because I was in elite sports for so long, I just it, I was just like, I love sports. I like helping and rehab injury, blah, blah, blah. So I was kind of just so immersed in that. I was so immersed with that. Growing up in Canada, you're so immersed with Western medicine, Western medicine, you know, so Western allopathic biomedicine. So it wasn't so much to please them at that point, because I knew I was already turning away and going back for me. However, what's really funny is that, uh, so my other grandfather, not the grandfather that practiced astrology, my maternal grandfather, the one that was growing herbs in the backyard, when I was born, um, he had consulted an astrologer in, in Hong Kong. And that astrologer said, oh, this person's going to be one of three professions. And one of the three professions, actually, she, my mom didn't tell me this till later, was a doctor. She thought it was an allopathic biomedicine doctor. But now look at what happened. <laughs> you are a doctor, right? I'm a doctor of acupuncture, I'm in medicine, you know, got a degree, you know, practice Chinese medicine. I'm a, basically a Chinese medicine physician. So I ended up walking that road. And so that was really funny. So I'm glad you share that. I can see, you know, you're going into banking. That's why it's such a different road that once you go into TCM and you could see how passionate you are about it, that's because you followed your heart, not your head, right? Like not yeah. obviously because you love your parents. I understand that. Yeah. That has nothing to do with that. But yeah, eventually when we follow our heart, it always falls into place. So thank yeah. you for sharing that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so today I wanted you to be on the podcast because it is the Chinese New Year and I'm a monkey. I don't need you to tell me what that means. I'm not asking for that, but I'm a monkey and I always relate to it really well because I know monkeys like to have fun and I like to have fun. And this is how I teach by having fun. So I always think it's funny. But this year is the year of the dragon. So I think this is interesting. And you can tell us what that entails in a nutshell, because we can't go into a whole you know, course on astrology, but just the basics for us to understand. Because for me, out of the 12 sign 
from in Chinese astrology, the dragon seems like that's the only one that's not a real animal. So it feels like a bit different from an ox or, or a rooster or like a monkey, like I said. So can you share what you want to share, explaining a little bit in a nutshell how we look at Chinese astrology? Oh my gosh, in a nutshell. For those of those that know uh, the deep... Uh, the deep layers of astrology, you know, it's so hard to talk about it short and in a nutshell. But but I, I, I understand, I can see the value of speaking about it in little like small bites. So yeah, this dragon is so mystical. And then when we talk about the dragon, we have to think about astrology more as a pillar. Everyone talks or focuses on the animal. I think that's one thing that I really want to, why I keep talking about this, is I really want to kind of re-educate the world that it isn't only about the animal. In Chinese astrology, we have something called the eight characters or the four pillars of destiny. The four pillars come from the year, month, day, and time you're born. In each pillar, there's a character on the top that's called from the heavens or the heavenly stem. That is the cycle of energy coming from the heavens or the universe. And and we have a five element language or five phase language to define that cycle. Then the bottom part of that pillar is called the earthly branches. The earthly branches is the cycle of energy here on planet Earth, which also has a five-phase language of defining it. The original Chinese astrology characters are not animal signs. Thousands of years later, they assigned an animal to that bottom earthly branch sign to give astrologers and everyone uh, a quick, easy way to understand the energetics of that. So in essence, you always have to think of it, there's a a heavenly portion and an earthly portion. There's some energy cycling from the heavens, and then we have energy here on earth as we go through the seasons. And here's humankind standing in the middle. And we are affected by what's above us and below us. In order for us to be in balance, we need to understand how to be in balance with heaven and earth. So the pillar represents both. And at the time you're born, at that moment in time, the Chinese believe you inhale the chi of the universe and the chi of the earth at that moment in time. And that comprises your constitutional energy. Those eight characters or the four pillars now become or define who you are, your characteristics and your personality. And there are calculations that define your destiny in that there you go through 10-year cycles interact on your pillar. So let's go back to the pillar and how everyone goes on to the animal sign. So we're talking about the year someone's born. That's the one pillar. And if you knew the year you're born, you should know what the heavenly portion is. So say you're like a, a water monkey. It would be better to say a water monkey than just a monkey. It gives more definition or understanding of your constitutional energetic workings, how your mind works. And in fact, the year we're born tends to be the way we think. The month and the day are more the weight, the more of the weighting of our constitutional personality. So I like people to just remember the year is not your personality. It's not a big part, but it's a, it's like one quarter. And if you just talk about the animal, it's one eighth. So it's good to know it because it's still part of you. It's just not the full picture, but we can still talk about it. It's not their core constitutional self, but it's part of it. We can say monkeys that have a lot of metal in them, they have a little bit of water and they have a little bit of earth. So that means you as a monkey having a uh, metal in you, you uh, metal, young metal is hardworking. It cuts through, it gets through, it blazes a trail. It's water intuitive, goes with the flow. It's earthness, it's earthy hardiness, tolerant, stable, reliable. So let's go to the dragon now. So if we look at the dragon year, what is the year bringing us? Well, it's bringing us the wood dragon. So wood from the heavens. Wood from the heavens is like a big oak tree growing. Young wood in someone's chart means they're about vision. They're about growth. They're constantly about learning and growing. The symbol of young wood is a tree. So trees have to grow, plants have to grow, or they will die. So young wood personalities, they have to keep growing, moving, and doing. They need to have vision and purpose, and they need to be moving forward to that. So that can tell you or speak to you about the kind of year we might have. It's about pushing and going and moving forward. 
in that year with the vision and the plan you have. Now, for us Chinese medicine practitioners, we also know if wood is not balanced, what can happen with that? If it's an excess, well, we can have uh, tension, frustration, anger, liver, gallbladder, young rising, too much heat, all of that. So that also could be a play for the world because we're looking at the world when we look at wood dragon, right? But then we have to look at the dragon part because there's an interpl interplay between the top and the bottom. So the bottom part, we have the dragon. Dragon, this mystical animal, is, it's got a lot of yang earth in it, like a mountain, but it's got a little bit of yin water, which is like the raindrops from the sky. And then it has a little bit of, of yin, yin wood, which is like a vine growing. So the dragon, it's so hardy, yet it has intuitive sense to go with the flow and know how to adjust. And it has this yin wood that's about still about growing and moving like yang wood, but it does so at a little bit more of a softer pace. But it's still about motivation to go, to move, to learn and to do it in a sensitive, hearty way. So that's a big part of the dragon. But now with the five phases, you know five phases, we have yang wood in the top, we have earth on the bottom. That in an inherent nature is a wood earth conflict. We know that wood controlling earth. So therefore this year also speaks about, mm, there might be some conflict with these two energetics because they're both, uh, immovable or is strong in their own right wood is very um what's the word i'm looking for when they're look when they're just narrowly focused they're very when they're very focused and motivated they just go in that direction they can't see sideways because they're looking forward only they can it's almost linear thinking but then earth earth essences like in the dragon is like nope i don't want to change i'm not going to change if i'm going to change i'm going to do it slow I'm going to do it as in my own pace. So there an inherent is some energy that wants to move fast, wood, and it, <laughs> something that wants to move slow, earth. Ah! But it's a battle of wills. And we can always smooth out that conflict with whatever the bridge is in between. The bridge in between is fire. Fire will smooth out that. It'll divert wood, not go to earth. It'll go to fire. And fire is about passion, benevolence, kindness, joy, happiness, compassion. So we need to take the year with some compassion and kindness to everyone as we're trying to all figure out our way and figure it at, it at our own pace and figuring out what is our passion moving forward and, and be mindful of others and how we treat people along the way. I absolutely resonate with this so much. First of all, being kind to others and compassionate. This is why we're TCM practitioners and this is why we do what we do. So it doesn't just mean in practice, but with family, with friends, with strangers. I love that you talk about the wood or the, the birth because wood is like the growth, the birth. It's trying to grow and learn, which there is nothing better than self-growth and learning and challenging ourselves. I wanted to start a podcast for three years, but <laughs> I know, right? And I started this year in 2024, but it took me a while just because first I was thinking, okay, the French accent, nobody's going to understand me. Second, I'm like, it takes a lot of my time. Do I have the time to do this? And then the third one was, well, are people going to want to listen? Are they interested in me being just in a podcast and not video? So I thought about all this, but this year, which is interesting, I was like, no, I'm going to jump in because I'm excited about it because I want to share. I want to bring guests in like you that can really open, you know, everyone in our community into something new to learn something. And you're telling us that this year is the year of learning, self-growth. And I'm like, oh my God, we're right in it right now. So this is fantastic. Fantastic. So thank it you for is. sharing that. And we know that it's the young wood dragon. So it's a little bit more energetic. Like you said, the new year is in February this year, depending on obviously it's the lunar calendar. I understand that. And is there a different time of the year where the dragon, let's say in wood time, like springtime would be different than in the fire summertime or in the fall metal time, or it doesn't matter. 
Oh, yes, it matters. It matters. It matters because this is where people look at like interactions. They look at harmonies and they look at clashes where you'll see maybe some of that. Some of astrologers say, if you're a monkey, you're the friend of the dragon. So you will have a great year. That's because there's a, a harmony that happens for the dragon has a, a trio of buddies that they like to help. And therefore, it, if it likes to help you, you will have is wants to help your blessings then the dragon has a best friend so if you have an animal sign that's the best friend it wants to help you but then the dragon also has an opposition enemy so if you have a an animal that is the opposition enemy you got to stand out of the way because the dragon is the chief this year the dragon has the power so if you are an enemy of the dragon well then just like hide and look out right there's all sorts of interactions so that also translates to the month. Every single month of the year, the 12 months, there is an animal associated with that. And that's a thing, think something that a lot of people don't realize. We have the year, but every month there's the same animal sign. So for example, February is always the tiger month. March is always the rabbit month. April is always the dragon month. So there will be some heightened interaction because it's the dragon year that happens with the, the month based on is it a clash with the month or is it a harmony with the month or is it nothing, a nil, a nothing. So let's give an example. Um, so it's a dragon year and the dragon is buddies with the monkey and the rat and together they like to create more water. So if you're born in the month of August or December, that's a monkey month and a rat month. That means that you may have extra help this year because your month is in harmony with the dragon year, the chief that wants to create more water. And especially if you need water in your chart, you will get extra help, at, especially at that month and this year. So it'd be a heightened effect that month besides the fact that this year might be helpful. However, if water is not helpful to your chart, and this is where I like to always, I always like to say, don't really read those, those articles, like read into it too much, because if you have to know what's your helpful element in your chart, you can't just know your chart. If water isn't helpful for you, well, then the heightened water might not be good. And you're going to feel that at an amplified effect as well. So that's how they can play out through the months. The months can definitely be felt more or felt less depending on your own chart. I can see how you could do a whole course on uh -huh. Chinese astrology because I can see the depth of it. And so I can many see the layers. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. And the passion. But I also can see that acupuncturists have an advantage when you learn Chinese astrology because we already know about the five elements. Yes. We already know about the yin and yang, the whole play of all those elements, it's so much easier for us to take so a much. course in Chinese astrology than someone that doesn't know any of this. So yeah, absolutely. 100%. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's really cool. So one of the questions I had is, do you use Chinese astrology while doing a consultation with someone? Or do you ask patients, hey, if you're ever interested, I can do this on the side or as an extra? Like, how do you go about it when it comes to someone coming in and they say, oh, I have low back pain? That's a very good question because um, I get asked that a lot. I think the physician in ancient China, they would have known it. They would do it right away, right at the beginning, because that's just part of the norm. What I do in the beginning, if someone came in for low back pain, because balance system is so effective, I don't usually look at the chart because I know my methods are pretty effective, so I don't really need to go there. If for some reason they came back or they had something new or they had something that plateaued in treatment or something new that was very difficult and whatever I was treating, it made some progress, but there was a huge plateau or there was a recurrence, then I think... I might, I might look at the chart. I want to look at their constitutional energy and see what can I do more specifically for their constitutional energy. Because when you look at a, a birth chart, you're going to see all these five phases and you're going to understand at least oh, years and years of practice will help you understand what is it that they actually need. And then I can apply that to the acupuncture channels and what elements they may need. So I don't necessarily 
draw their Chinese astrology chart right at the beginning unless the situation warrants it. So for example, sometimes, you know how you get those patients sometimes that come in and their chief complaints like a laundry list, but then as you get into the consultation, the laundry list becomes like a booklet, <laughs> right? And you're like, okay, this is a big, big case. So I might look at it right away because I can be really effective right away and not waste time. Sometimes people will come in, they specifically actually want to integrate that. Great. Then we do it right away. When I do chart it, if they haven't specifically asked for it, it stays confidential with me. I'm not sharing that because they may not want to know that. That's from my own information as, as a physician. If they plateau and, and they talk about other techniques that I think I want to apply. So for, say, for example, I want to apply acupuncture into astrology. Then I start to educate them on this method, why, how I can use it. Do I have their permission to use it? Because when you look at astrology chart and when you start talking about it, there's a lot of karmic effects. You have to, my personal philosophy and my family's philosophy is you must have permission. You must treat that energy with the greatest care and the greatest confidentiality. So I will get their permission. And usually at that point, they say, well, actually, I would like a full reading then. I'd like to know more. Some people don't want to know. Most people do. And so I usually do that at a separate point. The last thing I will say about that is sometimes when I, when I, when I do the chart, whether I've done it at the beginning or I've done it in, um, just for my own information and they don't know, it's useful for me just to know how to communicate with them. It's such a great communication tool. So for example, you know that their core constitutional self, something we call the day master, that's underneath the day pillar. Say they're a Yongwood self. There's lots of other five phases around it, but their core self is young wood. Young wood people, or even wood people in general, they have to do, they have to keep moving, or they will get tensed up. So it will it will be the, the least effective for me to say, you need to just sit and meditate to resolve your stress. Asking a wood person to sit still, ah, good luck, no way right? Whereas if it's a, a water person, especially if they're deficient water and they need more nourishment with water, meditation is a water activity. So that actually would benefit them. So for me, it's a great communication tool. Also, water people tend to be feelers. Wood people, they like to be direct and they just don't need you to beat around the bush. So I use that as a communication tool. It is so fantastic because you're right. Communicating with the patients in order for them to understand and trust our ability to help them is so key to a successful mm -hmm. practice. So you looking at the patient go, okay, this is a wood. So I'm going to talk to them in a way that they really understand where I'm coming right. from versus this is a water and I'm going to talk to them in a completely different way. Two more questions. And one of them is very specific. You know, when you have the person chart and you have their year, of course, they were born, the month, the day, do you need the hour every single time? Is it very important? What about if someone doesn't know they were born at two right. o'clock? Yeah. In some cases, we don't need the time. There's enough information for me to make a decision on if they're a strong self or a weak self or a special chart. And then I would say that's probably... Uh, 50, maybe 40%. I would say a, a little over half, more than half the time. The time is incredibly important because it gives the whole picture, especially on their, on the cusp of going either strong or weak or special. We need that last piece of information to really give us uh, the full picture because based on that, you're, you're basically deciding, does that core self strong? Is it core self weak? So in Chinese medicine terms, is it excess or deficient? Or is it a special chart that we have to do something different? That's guiding your decision-making, your therapy, your advice, everything. It guides everything. That makes sense. Yeah. And my last question is, okay, so let's say we have the year, month, day, and time, and we know what their chart looks like. And that was when they were born and they got the chi from the universe and the earth, all this does this changes with event post birth, meaning you've had trauma, you've had lots to deal with. Do you stay in that chart or is your chart going to be a little different because of outside event? Oh my gosh, such great questions. So in, in Chinese metaphysics, that whole three essences that I talked about earlier, where between heaven and earth, there is humankind that also speaks about 
how the Chinese view, quote, fate or destiny. And the Chinese view fate or destiny, destiny, they used to divide it in thirds, where a third is your Chinese astrology chart. A third is the environment you choose to live in. And the last third is the people you choose to associate with that to affect your decision making. In my experience, the Chinese astrology chart is 40%. It's much higher. So it's like a blueprint of your destiny. It's the roadmap. And then the feng shui affects, you know, you were absorbing environment that it can affect our health, that can affect our decision making, the people we choose to, those will also affect it. So what happens with a Chinese astrology chart, it still says timing of what things may happen, what areas of your life. The question is, how amplified is it? Or how minimized is it? And that will depend on your human choices and your environment. So I say to my clients, it doesn't mean you can avoid the bad. It means we can minimize it. What we want to do is we want to amplify the good and we want to minimize the bad. Or if we know ahead of time what's coming ahead, we can prepare. We can either prepare to receive the blessings or we can prepare to hide from the hazards. So if someone is, is, has gone through trauma, most likely it was already there in the blueprint. They were all kind of already meant to go through that as a learning experience. There's everything is always a learning experience to take you to a certain level, to take you to a certain place. Every single 10-year cycle, five-year mini, it's all meant for you to be in an evolution of yourself. You know, my philosophy is for, for astrology is your purpose is to discover who your best self is and to bring it to light. And everything that happens to you is for that reason, for that self-discovery. I always believe that even though once you're in a tough, rough patch in your life, where it's very difficult, when there's very, mm -hmm. very hard times, at that time, you don't see the lesson. You can't yeah. because you're yeah. in it. But eventually, you see why this happened, the lesson yeah. to learn. There's no loss. It's either a win or it's a lesson. And I yeah. absolutely believe that. It just takes a yeah. while to see the lesson, right? Exactly. Like it just, sometimes it takes you a few repeating the same until you finally register the lesson. Sometimes you get it first, right? It yep. all depends. But so I totally resonate with that. What we have now is for me is a little bit of a better understanding of the basics, first of all. So I really appreciate that. And I love everything we went into and I can see how much more there is to learn. So my question is, can you go quickly into... How long is the course on Chinese astrology? What are the main PowerPoints you teach? Can you tell us a little bit more about that course? So I have decided to do the Chinese astrology quote practitioner course at my school as a mentorship program. I've been taught by three teachers. And so what I've learned is that because this is so multi-layered, it actually takes time to build it in to truly understand it. And, and halfway through, you feel like you're, you're more confused than ever. So I decided to do it over two years with some testing homework along the way. Maybe by the end, you're done over three years. And honestly, I felt really comfortable as a, quote, consultant after about seven to ten years. OK, so two to three years is still short in my view, but it's more to set people up for the foundations of success. I have two prerequisite courses before the mentorship program, which people would have to apply to the mentorship program. The prerequisite courses are great. Anyone can take in general if they want to dive into more five phase knowledge. One is just called like the intro to Chinese astrology. It's just going each of the stems, the five phases and the personalities associated with that. And then there's another course that I did that's uh, with a colleague of mine, uh, Dr. Howard Chen, and we did a little diving deeper into the five phases because it really is a lifetime of work for you to really know it and know it well, right? Especially when you start to try to apply it in personalities and STEM. So it's just another adjunct add-on to say, okay, you want more? Here's more. So that, that's, that's awesome. it in a nutshell. Yeah. Well, it makes sense because when we learn acupuncture, a basic acupuncture program is three years. And even as we finish the three years, we feel like we don't know enough and we're going to learn more like as we go. And I think it's the same with anything, right? If you want to know yeah. Chinese astrology, you can get a little taste of it to see if that's really your jam and then go deeper. And like you said, it's going to take a few years, but that's the whole point of 
the wood year of you know self growth and growing and starting new things and right it's growing yeah. like a tree so you you grow in different branches literally of yeah. your knowledge that is yeah. TCM based so that's really cool before I let you go we will have all the links in the show notes but is there a place where people can find you either on your website or social media where can they look for you best first place is tanbalance.com it's my school that we've set up for the uh, three essences so channel theory acupuncture teaching um then there's astrology mentorship eventually i'll have a feng shui mentorship but the schedule's there some program information the registrar contact for more information that's probably a good place to go we'll put the link in the show note sonia thank you for coming and spending the Chinese New Year of the Dragon with me. I really, really appreciate all your knowledge. I feel like I want to literally open your brain and go look some more in there so I can find some more information because you have such a wealth knowledge of everything when it comes to TCM, including Feng Shui, which we haven't even talked about. So thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time and coming today. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being the leader in this too and, and trying to help educate the world, right? Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I truly hope you benefited from this episode and I would love for you to share it with a friend that may benefit from it as well. Follow the show, leave a review. And if you want more, Go to my website, acuforacademy.com. I have tons of resources there with treatment protocols, case study, free courses, and so much more. And connect with me on all social media at Acupro Academy. I'm on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, X, Pinterest, and LinkedIn and TikTok. <laughs> and no matter what, keep rocking it using TCM. Yeah.